وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praises due to Allah Azza wa Jal alone We ask Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions Welcome to another episode of Ramadan Droplets where we share an important point relating to Ramadan every single night the benefit that I would like to share with you this evening, insha'Allah ta'ala, is that of generosity. And when I talk about generosity, I'm going to use a very particular word in Arabic. We're going to talk about al-jud. And al-jud is something that the scholars, they say it is a'am min as sadaqah It's more general than sadaqah. Some of them defined it as giving the right thing to the right person or giving each person what's right for them. And it's also been defined as being giving a lot without having been asked for it. And I think it's a really important point that relates to al-jud, it relates to generosity, that it's about giving without being asked for it. As for if you're asked for it and you give, this is a kindness, it's an act of kindness, but generosity to be truly someone who is described with al-jud, it requires that you give without even being asked for it. Our first hadith is a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma annahu qal kana rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwada al-nasi bil khair wa kana ajwada ma yakunu fi shahri ramadan Ibn Abbas narrated from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was the most generous. He had the most jud, ajwad, the most generous of all of the people in doing good. And this tells us, this first sentence that Ibn Abbas gives us here, it tells us that the jud of the Prophet وسلم, the generosity of the Prophet وسلم, was not limited to the month of Ramadan. Rather, it was all the way throughout there. It wasn't that he was generous in Ramadan for hasb only. But it was that he was generous in Ramadan and, and especially generous in Ramadan and generous all of the rest of the year. He was the most generous of all of the people in doing good. And the most generous that he was, was in the month of Ramadan. And that tells us that the month of Ramadan is a month of generosity. Ramadan is the month of generosity. Because the Prophet وسلم, even though all through the whole year, he was incredibly generous. His generosity was at its peak in the month of Ramadan. The hadith continues. In Jibreel alayhi salam, kana yalqahu fi kulli sanatin fi Ramadan hatta yansalikha fa ya'ridu alayhi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Qur'an. Jibreel used to meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every year in Ramadan and until the month would end. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would revise or he would present to him the Qur'an, go over with him the Qur'an until the month of Ramadan would come to an end. And then Ibn Abbas, he said, فَإِذَا لَقِيَهُ جِبْرِيلُ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَجْوَدَ بِالْخَيْرِ مِنَ الْرِيحِ الْمُرْسَلَةِ He said then, when Jibreel would meet him, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was more generous in doing good than الريح المرسلة then the wind, and the wind here, the wind that is sent, الريح المرسلة, the wind that comes, the wind that blows, the resemblance of the generosity of the Prophet wasallam to the wind here is in two ways. First of all, that the benefit is for everyone. When the wind comes, and that wind that blows, الريح المرسلة, and it blows, that, that wind it blows, and it brings the feeling that the rain will come, Insha'Allah, the clouds will come and the rain will come and the barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. And that is for everybody. It's something that it covers everyone. Everyone benefits from it. And likewise, and that's the 
the, the wind that brings the news of, of rain, that brings the, the, the clouds that will bring the rain, it's of a general benefit to everyone. And the second thing is the speed of it. It's fast. So it tells us that the Prophet ﷺ was quick to be generous in every kind of way. And we said this is a'am min as It's more general than just giving sadaqah alone. It's more general than just giving sadaqah. But he was more generous in all kinds of good, generally for everybody, and the speed that he was quick to be generous in all different kinds of good. And that's why Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma compared him to al-rih al-mursala in his generosity. And al-Hasan al-Basri, the great Tabi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, بَذْلُ الْمَجْهُودِ فِي بَذْلِ الْمَوْجُودِ مُنْتَهَ الْجُودِ It's a very nice statement, very, uh, very beautifully worded. He said that spending your effort means spending what you have with the utmost generosity. Or spending what is there for the, uh, with the utmost generosity. Spending your effort, giving your effort. What does it mean when we say بَذَلَ جُهْتَهُ He really made an effort. What does it mean to make an effort? Making an effort means spending what is there with the utmost generosity. That's what it means to say that somebody بَذَلَ جُهْتَهُ He made an effort. That means you, when you make an effort, it means you spend from what is available to you with the utmost generosity. And Ibn Abi al-Ja'd, he narrated, إِنَّ الصَّدَقَ لَتَرْفَعُ سَبَعِينَ بَابًا مِنَ السُّوءِ He said, 70 different kinds of evil that could happen to you are relieved through a sadaqah. Now this is a statement of Ibn Abi al-Ja'd, rahimahullah ta'ala, but it's not something that is authentically reported as a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, there is a hadith which testifies to it. And that is the hadith of Mu'adh. Radiallahu an, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-sadaqatu tutfi'u al-khati'ah kama yutfi'u al-ma'u nar He said that charity puts out sins or wipes out sins like water puts out fire. And that's an evidence that charity is something that takes away calamities. It's something that removes calamities. It's something that removes problems and, and evil things that might happen to a person that is relieved um, and relief is brought to them when they show that generosity. And for sure, sadaqah, even though we said al-jud is more general than sadaqah, sadaqah, giving charity, is, is perhaps the greatest symbol of al-jud, of generosity. And Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu an, kana yatasaddaqu bisukkar. He used to give sugar in charity. He used to give sugar in charity. And listen to the reason why Abdullah ibn Umar used to give sugar in charity. He used to say, سَمِعْتُ اللَّهَ يَقُولْ لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ He said, I heard that Allah said, you will not reach al-birr, you will not reach a state of righteousness until you spend out of what you love. Wallahu ya'lamu anni uhibbu sukkar. And Allah knows how much I love sugar. He had a sweet tooth, radiallahu anhu wa arda. He had a sweet tooth and he loved it so much he used to give it in sadaqah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you won't reach a state of righteousness until you spend out of that which you love. And that's a, that's a real component of generosity. It's, a, it's not just also just giving from the things that you don't love or you don't have an attachment to, but to be so generous that you give out of what you love and you give out of what you need for yourself and what you would wish for yourself. That is what you give out yeah, and you show your generosity through that like Abdullah ibn Umar used to do radiallahu anhu wa arda. In Surah Al-Munafiqoon, Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ وَلَنْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا وَاللَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ And spend out of what we have 
provided for you. Before death comes to one of you and he says, My Lord, if only you would delay me for a term that is near, just a short time, I would give sadaqah and I would be from the righteous. But Allah will not delay a soul when its term comes, when the time appointed time for death comes and Allah is all aware of what you do. SubhanAllah, look at that. First of all, Allah Azza wa tells us, give sadaqah from what we have provided you. Allah Azza wa doesn't ask you to give sadaqah from something that He didn't give it to you as a gift in the first place. Rather, Allah Azza wa gave it to you as a gift. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, He is Ar-Razzaq, the one who provided it for you. And He only asks you to spend from what He already gave you, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And He tells of the person's regret who didn't give sadaqah. That a person, when they would pass away, if they didn't used to give sadaqah and they were not generous, they would say, my Lord, if only you would let me live for a short time so that I could give sadaqah. Look at what he said, he said, can I live for a short time so that I can do such and such an action or such and such an ibadah. The ibadah, the act of worship that that person wished that they could give and wished that they could do is to show that generosity by giving sadaqah. How, if you would only delay me for a short time, if you would only let me live a little while longer so that I could give sadaqah and be among the righteous. But Allah will not delay a soul when its appointed time of death comes and Allah is all aware of what you do. And Al Imam al Shafi'i, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Ramadan. He said, I prefer or I love for a person to increase in their generosity in the month of Ramadan. And here a Shafi'i is talking about the recommendation, the istihbab, the preference of being generous or being even more generous in the month of Ramadan. So what was the reason why Imam al-Shafi'i saw this preference that is preferred for a person and is recommended for a person to be more generous in the month of Ramadan, to even to, to go beyond their usual level of generosity because generosity is something for the whole year round, but to be even more generous in the month of Ramadan. He said, iqtida'an bi rasulillahi alayhi salatu wassalam. First reason, because you're following the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's how he used to be. So you're following his guidance, that's the first reason. The second reason, وَلِحَاجَةِ النَّاسِ فِيهِ إِلَى مَصَالِحِهِمْ Because the people are in need in Ramadan of the things that benefit them. They're in need of people's generosity in Ramadan. People need people's generosity in Ramadan. And then he explained why that is. He said, لِتَشَاغُلِ كَثِيرٍ مِّنْهُمْ بِالصَّوْمِ وَالصَّلَاةِ عَمَّ كَاسِبِهِمْ SubhanAllah, look at the time of the, how the time that Imam Shafi'i lived in Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He said, because so many people are so busy fasting and praying that they might not be giving as much attention to their work and their earnings. So they're more in need of the people's generosity in the month of Ramadan. And Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Inna lillahi wujuhan min khalqi, khalaqahum liqadai hawaij ibadi, yaroun al-juda majda, wal-ifdal maghnama, wallahu yuhib makarim al-akhlaq. Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Allah, there, Allah has certain people among His creation. He created them to fulfill the needs of His servants. SubhanAllah, can you imagine that? You've seen people like that, that you feel like Allah Azza wa Jal created them for the reason of helping other people. Like that's their ibadah that they are so, um, they, they're so amazing at, that Allah Azza wa Jal put them there to help other people. Allah created them and placed them on this dunya to fulfill people's needs. That's what that's shughlahum al-shaghid. That's what keeps them busy all the time is fulfilling people's needs. They see generosity as an honor. And they see al-ifdal and al-ihsan being good to people as a bounty. And Allah loves the most noble of manners. And Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu 
narrated from the Prophet وسلم, that he said, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ يُصْبِحُ الْعِبَادُ فِيهِ إِلَّا مَلَكَانِ يَنْزِلَانِ فَيَقُولُ أَحَدُهُمَا أَلَّهُمَّ أَعْطِي مُنْفِقًا خَلَفًا وَيَقُولُ الْآخَرُ أَلَّهُمَّ أَعْطِي مُمْسِكًا تَلَفًا Abi Hurairah narrates from the Prophet ﷺ that he said that there was there is not a day that goes by. There's not a day that people experience, not a morning comes that the people experience except that two angels descend. And one of them says, Oh Allah, give the one who spends a replacement. And the other one says, Oh Allah, give the one who withholds destruction or ruin. Subhanallah. Give the one who spends a replacement. I replenish their wealth, replace their wealth, replenish it. And as for the one who withholds their wealth, then give them ruin and take that wealth away from them and cause that wealth to be lost from them because they held onto it and they didn't give it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said a beautiful statement. He said, إِذَا أَقْبَلَتْ عَلَيْكَ الدُّنْيَا فَأَنْفِقْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَفْنَى وَإِذَا أَدْبَرَتْ عَنْكَ فَأَنْفِقْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَبْقَى He said a beautiful statement. He said that when the dunya comes towards you, meaning you have a lot of wealth and opportunities, then spend from it. Then spend from it. Because it's not going to go away. And if it goes away from you, then spend from it. Because it's not going to remain. And when you're in a state of wealth, spend. When you're in a state of wealth, in a state of luxury, in a state of ease, spend. Because that thing is not going to disappear from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replenish it and replace it for you. And when you see the dunya going away from you, Either you find yourself in a restricted situation or you see that as you move on in life and you come towards the end of your time in this world, spend because this world is not going to remain. This world's not going to remain for you. Rather, you're going to pass away and you're not going to take that money with you in the grave. And then he recited some lines of poetry. He said, Radiallahu an la tabkhalanna bi dunya wa hiya muqbila. فَلَنْ يَنْقُصُهَا التَّبْذِيرُ وَالصَّرَفُ وَإِنْ تَوَلَّتْ فَأَحْرَى أَنْ تَجُودَ بِهَا فَالْجُودُ فِيهَا إِذَا مَا أَدْبَرَتْ خَلَفٌ He said, رضي الله عنه, Don't be stingy with the dunya when it comes to you. Because your giving and spending from it will not decrease it. And if it turns away, so be keen to be generous from it. For generosity in this situation, when it turns away from you, will be a khalaf, it will be a replacement for you or something that will replenish for you what you had lost. That's what Allah Azza wa Jal made easy for me to mention. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to AMAU at home.com